Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is the ASUS P1, one of a handful of cards that featured a GSPPU or physics processing unit. If you're new to PC gaming then you probably have never owned or will never own one of these because these days they are pretty unnecessary, though it might be a good addition to an older system build. So what is it? Well, do you know how with new NVIDIA cards there's a physics option that you can enable in a few games that will allow you to get a few extra special effects like realistic explosions and maybe the way that cloth and other materials move about changes? Well, before PhysX was built into modern NVIDIA GPUs, you'd have to buy a separate card like this in order to enable those extra fancy effects. Whereas your computer's processor or CPU handles computing tasks and your graphics card or GPU handles the generation of images on your screen, a physics processing unit or PPU is designed to independently simulate the laws of physics. And that's how cars like these received such interest and acclaim at the time, though they weren't without criticism. Because of the price tag in excess of $100 and the amount of supported games which were very limited, it was a piece of hardware ideally suited to enthusiasts. If you built a high-end PC between 2006 and 2008, then you'd most likely have added a PhysX card to it. So let's talk about some of the games supported by such advanced tech of the time, followed by why the golden age of dedicated PhysX cards only spanned just two years. This is Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter 2. The original game would have come as part of a bundle with this Zeus P1 PhysX card and set the buyer back around $270 or £250. You can see why it was classed as enthusiast tech. The second game, however, makes better use of PhysX in my opinion, and there's a whole level by the name of Aegea Island designed to make use of such hardware. I've had to dig out some older components for this one, but let's take a look at the on screen effects with PhysX enabled and set to high using the P1. The foliage sways in the wind, fences and structures get blown apart in natural explosions, and it really adds to the immersiveness of the whole game, especially when the enemy can no longer hide behind anything. Another title that puts a geophysics to good use is the original Mirror's Edge. It features a variety of physics effects that, just like the second Ghost Recon game, really add to the overall immersiveness. Helicopters will blow debris off the top of buildings and there are just so many little details that bring the environment to life. But the reason I chose this game is because it allows me to transition smoothly onto my next point and one that involves the end of this short era. You see, in 2008, NVIDIA bought out Aegea and implemented PhysX as we know it as part of any 8000 series graphics card or above, though it was the company's 200 series GPUs that really started to make great use of it, and it would allow the end user to switch on PhysX effects in supported games without the need for a separate piece of hardware like the P1. Mirror's Edge had started development before the buyout, but released afterwards, meaning that it could make use of both Aegea PhysX cards and onboard PhysX found within NVIDIA's latest hardware at the time. It goes without saying that this buyout rendered dedicated PhysX cards almost immediately obsolete, as the new GTX 200 series could handle PhysX far better than Aegea's PPU ever could. Anyone who had bought one between 2006 and 2008 probably wouldn't have need to install it in their next build, unless of course it was for playing those older games. But what about today? Is there a need for such a piece of hardware? Well, you might not be able to use one even if you wanted to. Driver support for them ended after the NVIDIA SDK 2.8.3 release, so more modern releases like Mafia 2, Metro 2033 and Singularity to name a few games with available physics options can't make use of a dedicated PPU. In fact, these days you'd be better off using a standard low-end graphics card as a dedicated physics card, something along the lines of a GTX 750 Ti or GT 730 as you might see a slight performance increase in a few games. I'd like to exaggerate the word might in that sentence and the word few as well. Don't forget, you'd be adding extra noise, extra heat and spending extra money when it probably makes more sense just spending the extra on a better graphics card in the first place if you want to be able to take full advantage of any physics offerings. Guys, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the uh, sort of history and then rapid decline of dedicated physics cards today. This video may have been a little bit different, but uh, 
after Zeus sent me this card, I just had to check it out. So I hope you've enjoyed it nonetheless. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.